Well, it's time now for our regular Wednesday science spot. Today we're looking at avian flu or bird flu in North America. North America where three people were infected with bird flu and specialists have been unable to identify the source of the contamination. First a teenager in Canada, then a child in California, and these following a first contamination in Missouri. Well, to talk more about all this, let's bring in our science uh, editor, Julia Seeger. Hi, Julia. Hi. Uh, you know, there, this has lots of names, doesn't it? Influenza A, N1, H1, H5N1. What is the difference? Walk us through it all. So there are different varieties of influenza viruses uh, that are ca classified in different types, A, B, and C. And within those types, you have subgroups, subcategories, if you will. If you look, for instance, at the type A, the influenza A, uh, you'll, you'll have H1N1 virus, H5N1 virus, or even uh, H3N2. But if we look at the most, the two most common ones, at least the ones that we hear of, uh, if you look at H1N1, so it's a type of influenza A, but it originates in pigs. Uh, it caused a human pandemic, as you may recall, in 2009, and it's now considered as uh, a seasonal influenza virus. And it causes, as you know as well, high fever, body aches, and sore throat, and headaches. Now, if you look at H5N1, and this is what we're going to be talking about today, so so-called bird flu or avian flu, it originates in birds this time. And there's absolutely no human-to-human -human contamination, not that we know of at least. But it is possible for humans to be infected through an infected bird. And those three uh, cases we were talking about just now uh, in North America, why are epidemiologists so worried about those? So let me just give you the context first. Uh, H5N1, so-called avian flu, has been uh, circulating intensive, uh, intensively throughout the world, let it be in Europe, but mostly in the United States. We've seen outbreaks of infections in uh, domestic poultry, but more and more we've also seen cases in mammals, and specifically in dairy cows in the United States, let it be in California, Michigan, but also Missouri. And this is what we call epizootic, uh, an epidemic within animals. And you have about 500 herds throughout the United United States that have been affected by this, and everything points to the fact that it did originate with a bird, and then the ep epidemic spread also to, uh, to cows, and the cows were also transferred between those farms. Now, what's interesting as well is that we've seen a lot of human cases, but most of those cases, 63 of them, were among farmers who were working on dairy farms or poultry farms. Now, why is, are those three cases that you just mentioned so worrying? Because these three people, two of them children, have had never been in contact with animals. Um, and so virolog virologists are now looking at the situation. They have more and more cases uh, within mammals, and they have more and more cases within other types of species as well. And so what this means is that the virus could have mutated and become more adapted to mammals. And hence, that means if it's more adapted to mammals, then with time, in the longer run, it's going to be more adapted to humans. And what they fear is that we could see the same situation that what we saw in 2009 at the beginning of uh, the epidemic of the swine flu. What happened is that you had a you know, a few sporadic cases, two or three, same as here. And it also originated in California, and that went on to create um, this huge epidemic that we saw with more than 280,000 people who died worldwide. So for now, there's absolutely no um, proof of contamination between humans because, for instance, those farmers didn't go on to contaminate other people in their entourage. The three cases that we just talked about, same thing. They didn't contaminate other people around them. It's just that we still don't know what the source is. And epidemiologists don't like that situation. They want to know where it's coming from and what exactly they're facing. And uh, I've heard that, you know, the authorities have been accused of, of not doing enough screening. Not That's right. So, since September's expert has have really highlighted the fact that authorities are not are, are taking too much time to uh, initiate those screenings within the farms. You have farms that also have refused to do so. So we have an incomplete picture of how much the virus uh, has spread. Now, they're going to have to keep on checking different vectors. There was a lot of uh, anxiety having to do with milk specifically because some milk samples uh, revealed the presence 
presence of genetic material of the uh, of of the virus, at least in raw milk. But the CDC has now said that pasteurized milk is fine. There's no risk of transmission there, but there's still batches that were recalled. They're also going to have to increase the monitoring of wastewater. As you know, this is a, a relevant mean to identify contamination within human populations, and they're going to have to do so quickly because winter is coming, and so there's going to be more cases of the regular flu, and it's going to be much more difficult to decipher the regular flu from the avian flu in wastewater. Okay, thanks very much, Julia. Julia Seeger there, our science editor, as usual, on a Wednesday.